Aloha, everybody, and welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. We've shown you our favorite food items on the Hawaiian island of Oahu, and today we're going to take you on a foodie tour of the island to highly acclaimed restaurants we've never been to before. We'll show you the best new breakfast spot on Waikiki Beach. We'll try some of the best food we've ever eaten from Honolulu to the windward side. We'll even show you a couple places close to Olani that are worth escaping the resort for. We'll do some sightseeing, including a Japanese temple, one of the best lookout spots that doesn't require a hike free weekly fireworks show, and we might even finally see a Hawaiian sea turtle. Come with us on this adventure. First up, we're going to one of our favorite restaurants on this island, that is Monkey Pod. We're not going to the one in Kolina, we're going to Waikiki. And the reason why we're going there is they are the only Monkey Pod that right now has breakfast. And it's in the Outrigger Hotel. So you gotta find some parking or pay for valet. It's kind of expensive, but this place looks beautiful. It's right on the beach. You can see like the ocean from your table. I am so impressed with how this looks. And you know, Monkey Pod is by Peter Merriman who's this famous chef in Hawaii, and it's named after the monkey pod tree. So in the center of the restaurant, they have these like monkey pod tree displays. I hear at night they have live music, just like they have in Koalina, and they have the famous monkey pod Mai Tai, which you know I had to get. But the menu here is why we're here, and I'm excited to try breakfast for the first time. So you're telling me if we decide to come back to Oahu and we don't stay at Alani, we should stay at the Outrigger Hotel because it has a monkey pod? <laughs> I think that's the obvious answer. I mean, look at this view. I forgot to bring my bathing suit. We could have just like drank a Mai Tai, got some breakfast, and then hopped right into the ocean. This is so beautiful. If you come to any of the monkey pods, you gotta get yourself the monkey pod Mai Tai. I've had this many times at the Koalino location, so I know the magic that's the monkey pod Mai Tai. It always surprises me. Five out of five, Peter. This is in our best of Oahu video, so you know it gets the ordinary adventure gallery. There's so much on this menu that's just for breakfast, and it all looks fantastic, but I had to get myself the monkey pod Mai Tai flapjacks. These are crispy edge brown butter flapjacks, and this says the Kula rum from Maui with the honey lily koi foam that they put on the actual Mai Tai. I think I found my new favorite breakfast on Oahu. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see this, but this, these are thick and fluffy, crispy on the outside, just a little bit, but so fluffy. It's like Eden Hawaii in pancake form. Five out of five people. What I love about this is like, this is the same pineapples that they put in the Mai Tai. <laughs> and I ordered the Hawaiian chili quiles. This has pork, fried egg, tortilla chips, house-made chili salsa, pinto beans, jalapenos, white cheddar, Greek yogurt, avocado, onion, and cilantro. Why is the food so good here? It is so good. I've literally never had anything at this restaurant that is bad. Every single thing that we've ever tried here has been a five out of five. Well, the chef Peter Berryman is like just incredible. Apparently he's an amazing chef, obviously. And then you mix in the pork in there that's a little bit salty. This might be the best version of chili kids I've ever had. It's amazing. Must get, five out of five. I'm not sure if you know this, but I am a connoisseur of chili killies. I actually learned about this a few years ago. I was in Mexico City for the premiere of Darren Aronofsky's Noah. We were doing a press thing where we were interviewing Darren Aronofsky at the table and we all ordered like breakfast and he was like, you should get the chili killies. And I was like, sure, I've never had it before. And that's when I discovered chili killies. <laughs> Anyways, so, in Hawaii, so basically Darren Aronofsky is to blame of me, my love of chili killies. That might be the best chili killies I've ever had. That's what I said. I feel like you really can do no wrong here. Yeah. This is incredible. I don't know what I would get. The pancakes or this. Well, we could share both. Both are so. good. They complement each other because this is savory and the pancakes are, you know, sweet. Just like us. I'm sweet or savory. Yes. Wait, what? So we were just talking with our waiter and some of the rooms here at the Outrigger Hotel have breakfast included and that breakfast is here at monkey pod it is a more limited menu it doesn't include the pancakes but it does include the chili quiles and a lot of other stuff so i think that's a 
pretty dang good deal to have some of the best breakfast on the island included with your hotel room. This hotel looks cool it too. Does. The last time we were on Oahu, we were like considering staying here and now I feel like we gotta stay here eventually. <laughs> or just make the commute and come here for breakfast. And we wanted to say a quick thank you to Kapua. She's the manager over at Monkey Pod. She's an ordinary adventurer. We met her husband over at Koalina. She also works over there. Yeah, so. you were so sweet. I decided to walk out on this little ledge into the ocean and I'm starting to think wearing my Crocs with socks was not a good idea. They haven't gotten wet yet, but I think it's just a matter of time. Yeah, the water keeps on like crashing yeah. onto there. I didn't bring a separate pair of socks, but it's okay. That's the beauty of Crocs, they could get wet. <laughs> but not your socks. Yeah, I'd have to take off my socks. But I should have taken them off before we walked out here. I don't know what I was thinking. A few moments later, I just took off the socks. I'm ready to get wet, baby. Let's go. There, there, right there. Right oh there. my oh. God, he's huge. Yeah. Right there. Wow. Wow, it's like the biggest one I've ever seen. Yeah, we came out to the end of this pier and one of the locals said that he just spot, spotted a turtle over here. We barely saw one come out of the, the water, but now Kitra's- was huge. Kitra's on a mission. Yeah, now I want to stand here until we see him again. We can't leave without seeing a turtle again. <laughs> that was it. Was it? Or it was a rock was something. I think that was it. It looked like a, like a bald person's head. That was definitely the turtle. Dang it. Okay, well, we I tried. Saw him. We tried. People are just gonna have to believe us. Wow. Oh, oh my God, wow. <laughs> we did it, we saw a Hawaiian turtle. <laughs> Took what long a, enough. What a cutie little guy. Oh, he's loving it right here. Yeah. There must oh be a lot of gosh. green stuff for him to eat over here. My favorite thing, well I have so many things that I love about turtles, but this turtle specifically when he's eating, his little butt sticks up and then he kind of gets washed away by the waves because and it's just so cute. His, I'm like, is that his head? And then it's always like his little butt popping up out of the water. It's so cute. I'm so happy. I'm so happy we finally saw one together. Wow, I know. This feels like an, a, a historic moment. Time we drive around the island, I just love looking at the trees, the Hawaiian trees that you don't really see anywhere else, like the banyan trees and the trees that have like branches growing off the branches that root into the ground. You just, I don't know, they're so cool again. Peter loves it, literally like when we're driving around Waikiki. Like, 600 feet, continue straight to stay on Kelly Road. Peter loves it so much whenever we're driving around Waikiki, he literally has to be like a nature field reporter and he's like, honey, Look at that tree over there. That one's got the roots that go into the ground and then the leaves and then the branches. It's really cute. You're like my little nature guy. <laughs> so next up, we're going to the Ala Moana Center. And this is a big mall. It's the world's largest open air shopping center. It has 350 stores attracting 53 million people every year. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people know that Moana means ocean. Ala Moana means path to the ocean because it's right near the water. I gotta say, I really like this shopping center. A lot of the shopping centers in Waikiki are like a little too fancy for me, but this one has like a nice mix of like Hawaiian places, like there's like an arcade. Yeah, I actually came to this the very first time I went to Hawaii back in 2002, I believe, or 2003. I came here with my family and I was staying on Waikiki Beach and my disc man broke. For all you kids out there, this is before Spotify, this is before MP3s. You had to take a CD and put it in a little machine and it spun around and you had little earphones. You had to listen to your discs. Yeah, so I had my whole- Wait, is that th like that thing in Guardians of the Galaxy? No, that's oh, I think yeah. a Walkman, right? Yes. Isn't that, yeah, different. 
Uh, so it broke. So I actually walked all the way to the shopping center and I think I bought a new one or I forget what exactly was the problem, but I was like, I need my disc man. So when I'm laying on the beach, I could be listening to like Backstreet Boys or whatever I listen to, Justin Timberlake. Anyways, that's okay. my story about this mall. We found a croc store and they have the McDonald's collection. Yeah, these are pretty dope. They got french fries on the inside. I think I like the Grimace one most of all, but they also have the Hamburglar. <laughs> This mall is so big, it has two food courts. At least two food courts. <laughs> yeah, at least two. Maybe even more, who knows? So the reason why we've come to the Lanai, the food court on the second floor, is because there's this place called Mana Sandwiches. And when we were in Japan, we fell in love with these sandwiches that we had first found at 7-Eleven. They eat these like fruit sandwiches. And this Mana Sandwiches place has a ton of them. Yeah, they got everything here. They got the egg salad sandwiches. They got banana and Nutella. They got strawberry banana Oreo. And they have tonkatsu. What we decided to get was the one with the Japanese strawberries. They're supposed to be sweeter than normal strawberries. You can actually buy them in a case if you want to like just buy Japanese strawberries. And they also sell their milk bread, which is like the fluffy bread that the sandwiches at 7-Eleven came in. So I'm so excited. <laughs> I've been craving, since we left Japan, I've been craving these sandwiches. So the sandwiches themselves are like five, six bucks, but we ended up getting the one that's like the Japanese strawberry, so it's more money, it's nine dollars. A lot more money than the 7 Eleven in Japan, it was like a dollar <laughs> or two. I gotta learn what this cream is so we can make this at home. But you also need that bread, that milk bread, it's just like so fluffy. It's so fluffy, I'm gonna die! It's so fluffy. Oh my gosh, how are the strawberries? Oh my god, they're so sweet. It's hard to explain because it's not like they're candy strawberries, but they're definitely a lot sweeter than American strawberries. Five out of five years. <laughs> I almost feel bad eating one because we only got four in there. Or actually, we only got two cut in half <laughs> for $9. Do you mind if I eat one? And by the way, in Japan and 7 uh, Eleven, it would be two sides of a sandwich. We only got one side. Oh my god, you're right. I didn't even think of that. Whatever. So many people that we know were like, you gotta try Japanese strawberries, they're so good. They're like expensive, but it's worth it. I now understand. I want to go buy a pack of those strawberries and bring it back to the hotel. <laughs> I know. How much is the pack of the strawberries? I think, I'm not sure, but I think expensive. This is freaking incredible. What makes the strawberries so good there? I'm so confused. Don't get me wrong. I like strawberries from America too, but like these are like on another level. This gets the Ordinary Adventure star. I wish we had bigger appetites because I would try like everything on the menu, but we have so much other stuff to try. Dang it. Okay, you, okay, fine. You can have it. <laughs> Next up, we made our way over to Hula Dog, which is just a few blocks away from the beach here in Waikiki. And this is a special Hawaiian type of hot dog. It was founded in 2000 by a family who wanted to blend Hawaiian and American cuisines. And what makes it fun is it has like a taro purple bread that you shove the hot dog in except it's not just hot dogs you could get sausage there's a bunch of different flavors and sauces and options i got the classic one here called the poi dog and this is using that taro bread it has a jalapeno garlic lemon sauce pineapple relish and hawaiian mustard and we didn't know this before coming here but this is actually a place that anthony bourdain visited and we were speaking to the owner and unfortunately they're closing in january because it's just too expensive to rent this little plot of land, which makes me very sad, but also excited that I get to try it before they close. This is some place that we've been meaning to go every time we come here to Oahu, and we're finally trying it today. Hopefully Ooh. they can find a new location or yeah. something. The Hawaiian mustard is actually like a lily koi mustard, and then that jalapeno garlic lemon sauce makes it like sweet and spicy. The bread is super soft and fresh and moist and delicious. I feel like this is like the perfect way to eat a hot dog because it's all tucked into like a little piece of bread. You know what I mean? It's all snug as a rug as a bug in a rug. I'm not sure if you remember this, but when we went to Cabana Bay, I think the bar there serves Hawaiian hot dogs just like this. Not taro bread, but it's like... Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's an ingenious idea. And I'm really sad they're closing. Hopefully they can find another place to open because this is good. There's a bunch of different flavor combinations, so like it makes me want to try them all. And now I'd like to thank Beam for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Have you ever had trouble sleeping or falling asleep? I know I have. 
As you guys know, we travel a lot and all that travel can really mess with your sleep schedule and your body clock. And that's where Beam comes in. Beam's Dream Powder is a delicious cup of hot cocoa that helps you relax and get your best night's sleep. I don't know about you, but when I don't get enough sleep, it will ruin my entire next day. You put a scoop of the powder in a mug of hot water or milk, blend using the Beam frother, and it gives it a nice, cozy finish. And all you have to do is drink it a half an hour before bedtime and you will get the best night's sleep ever. Go to shopbeam.com slash ordinary adventures or use the QR code right here to get up to 35% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. In a clinical study, 93% of participants reported Dream helped them get a better night's sleep. New Year's is the perfect time to start implementing new healthy routines. I love that I wake up refreshed, no grogginess, all due to the high quality ingredients. And now, back to the adventure. Up, we decided to head a little bit further away from the beach to Wyola Shave Ice. This is the original store of this mini chain that dates back to the 1940s. The shave ice here is old style. That means they shave it very fine and they put like sugary syrups on top. And unlike Matsumoto, they still have the original grocery store here where you can actually buy like sugary candy and stuff like that. The seating is limited. There really is just like one bench out front. But a lot of people have told us that this is the best shave ice in all of Oahu. So what I decided to get is I got the Obama Special, which is lily koi, lemon lime, and cherry. I got it over ice cream and some condensed milk on top. And Obama and his family used to go to the other location. That's the order he used to do all the time. I didn't get it because that just sounded like a great mixture. That like evaporated touched my tongue <laughs> and like just turned to liquid. You know, we just did a video where we declared Matsumoto the best shaved ice on the island. But I think this might be better. Wow. So our video is already out of date. <laughs> but these flavors are super sugary, super sweet. It's so such fine powder. And it like literally just melts away. Five out of five Peters. You gotta see what Ketchup thinks. It doesn't even feel like ice. What the heck? Wow, almost feels like cream. Oh, look at that, the further you dig in. Oh my God, look at it, it's like that butter. It's like it cuts like butter. This gets the Ordinary Adventure Star. I think this might be the best on the entire island that we've had. We've only had like four of them and there's many, many. But this just like, I can't describe how like smooth it is. It's insane. The only thing bad about it being so fine is it like melts really fast. I've got like 18,000 brain freezes, but it was worth it. <laughs> Cause I'm like frantically trying to eat it. So freaking good guys. So good. Next up, we're gonna head to the windward side of the island to eat at a restaurant that is number five on Yelp's list of a hundred restaurants that are must-eat restaurants in the United States. This has been on our list. Every time that we come to Hawaii, we've never gotten to eat here, so I'm intrigued. The views on this side of the island are like unmatched. It's like the most beautiful place on the planet. We have arrived at Adela's Country Eatery. And like a lot of things in Oahu, it is located in a strip mall. And this has a 4.8 on Yelp with almost 3,000 reviews. And this was founded by Adela, who learned the art of noodle making in Japan. She perfected her recipe using locally grown Hawaiian produce that would otherwise be thrown away. Each dish here at Adela's is cooked fresh to order. They source the finest locally grown produce, supporting the Hawaiian farmers communities around the island. You can see them actually making the noodles while you're waiting to order. And you can also buy noodles to bring home, and cook at your own home. But you can see all the accolades on the wall. Like this place is considered one of the best things on this island. I don't know why it's taking us three trips to Oahu to try it. So we made our way over to Heia State Park because there is no seating over at Adela's and just keep in mind it is made to order so it takes about 30 to 40 minutes 
And the portions are huge. We got two things and I'm kind of like, we should've just got one to share it, but we wanted to try like a variety. And the one that I got is one of their most popular combinations. It's taro pasta with shrimp, luau leaves, mushrooms, and a coconut cream sauce. And it is so incredibly beautiful. You can make your own combination. They had like avocado noodles. They had a bunch of different varieties, but I wanted to go with something that was popular. And I gotta say, I haven't tasted it yet, but I am not mad. Look at these purple noodles. It smells good. I think there is a reason why this place is so popular and number five out of the 100 best places to eat in the country, because it is so good, so flavorful. <laughs> flavorful, my favorite word to describe things. It almost does taste like an Alfredo, but it's a little bit sweeter because of the coconut cream. Very dense, very saucy, like the noodles are covered and the shrimp is cooked so well with the nice like Parmesan cheese or whatever on top. I don't know what took us so long to come here and I wanna already wanna go back and try like different combinations of stuff. Gets a five out of five, obviously. And I got another one of their most popular combinations and that is Okinawan sweet potato ube pasta with pork belly and garlic. We're gonna pour this on top of here. That pork belly is so tender. Is it tender and juicy? It is tender and juicy. <laughs> Not tasting the sweet potato as much as I'm tasting the garlic butter that's on top there. But it's beautiful to look at. Five out of five meters. I think it's safe to say this place gets the Ordinary Adventure star. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like you could get one of these and share it with two people, maybe even a family. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a lot of food. <laughs> when we were in there ordering, we actually met the owner and she was so sweet. She like told us like a bunch of nice places to go to eat our meal. She gave us like little bottles of water. She's like, you're gonna need some water. And she also recommended this cheesecake. It's an ube cheesecake and it looks freaking fantastic. This is so good. It literally melts in your mouth. It is so creamy. It's the perfect hint of sugar, not too sugary. And you could really taste the flavor of the purple sweet potato. And there's like barely any crust there. I could see why this was voted the number one cheesecake on the island. This is amazing. If I have only one complaint, it's that I wish there was more crust. I wish there was like an Oreo crust. That would be good. Or like a chocolate crust. Yeah. Five out of five Ordinary Adventure Star. You already knew. Next up, we're gonna go to the Bayado Temple. And to get here, you have to drive through the Valley of the Temples, which is like the most beautiful cemetery I've ever seen. So pretty. You might recognize this. This has been used in an episode of Lost season one. It's in the flashbacks involving Sun and Jin, and there it was used as Korea, but here it is Hawaii, and it's actually a replica of a 900 year old temple from Japan. It's actually like a scaled replica. Yeah, the grounds are so beautiful with the hills in the distance, the koi ponds and the swan roaming around. It's yeah, just so- Just don't feed the swan yeah. or don't get near the swan. <laughs> it, it could bite you. But I, I'm so glad we stopped here. It's $5 per person and I highly recommend it. Yeah, and there's also this three ton brass bell, which is said to bring you peace and good fortune to anyone who rings it. So of course we had to ring it. right near Kulo Ranch. If you haven't seen our video from there, we went to the Jurassic World filming location. Check that out. But right before you get there, there's the Waiole Poi factory. And here, the thing to get 
is the Sweet Lady of Waiole. And this is a combination of traditional Hawaiian treats, kulolo and hupia ice cream. Kulolo is a traditional Hawaiian dessert made from taro, coconut milk, and sugar. It has a dense, sticky texture. Just the combination of that cold coconut ice cream with the warm, gooey taro. It's almost like a, a sticky, like, bread pudding. It's so good. Five out of five, Peters. This is worth coming over to this side of the island. I mean, and the views, too. This is gonna sound so weird, but like, just one bite of this, I feel like I'm in Hawaii. Obviously, I am in Hawaii, but it's just like, oh, this is Hawaii. You wanna know what Hawaii is? Get this. And I love that it's like melting. It's kind of like a little soup. It's good soup. Good soup. Mm. Ordinary Adventure Star? I'll finish it. What? Wait, can anybody tell me why? Are there wild chickens all over the the island? I I mean, there must be a story, right? There must be a reason. Or have they always been here? I think they're just always on the search for good food, like us. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. We always find them at every restaurant. We yeah, have. and they're always so cute, and I love them all so much. I'm just happy that they're alive and not on someone's plate. <laughs> Next up, we're going to head to Roy's Koalina. This is located right across the street from Milani at the golf club. So it does have parking if you want to drive, but you could actually just cross the street and, and walk. And you probably know Roy's was founded in 1988 by Roy Yamaguchi. He's a James Beard Foundation Award winner, and he specializes in Hawaiian and Japanese fusion cuisine with a focus on sushi, seafood, and steak. His first restaurant opened in Honolulu, Hawaii. It's now expanded to 29 locations worldwide. And I'm looking at the menu here. It's been explained to me that the menu items with the Y next to it are his signature dishes that you can get at any of his locations. But the ones that are not marked with the Y are unique to this location. We are here for lunch today and you have the option to sit outside if you want to. It gives you a beautiful view of the golf course. <laughs> but we're sitting inside and the drink that I'm gonna try is the Hawaiian Chili Pepper Martini. This has absolute pear has chili water and elderflower, and you know that I had to try a chili pepper water drink. Anytime I see anything with chili pepper water in it, I feel like I must try it. Oh my God, this is actually amazing. The sweetness of the pear mixed with the spiciness of like the salty chili pepper water actually goes really well together. I'm honestly shocked. I'd give it like a four and a half out of five. It's really good. When I was looking at the drink, you could see like the chili flakes flying at the bottom of the drink. This is delicious. I never knew that pear vodka was like a thing. And for my drink, I got the Mount Kalala Mai Tai. This is Don Q rum, tropical juices, and dark rum floater. <laughs> and our friend Kidder helped build Halani. And so he used to tell us he, he would come over here, get the ribs, get the Mai Tai. So I took this under his recommendation. Spoiler alert, we came here the other night and we ate off camera and loved it so much that we're back again. <laughs> Our friend Kidder is a true connoisseur of Mai Tais. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm kind of a connoisseur. You are, but yeah. yeah. I love the glass here, the yeah. tiki glass. Very nice. You know what? It's so well done that it really just tastes like juice. You can taste it, but it, it's not like, Sometimes you have a drink and you're like, oh, that was a strong pour. It doesn't taste like a strong pour, even though it probably was. And that's just a testament of how well it was made. Five out of five Peters. One of the main differences between lunch and dinner is they actually have like a huge sushi menu. And I got some of the best sushi that I've ever had. We also tried these chicken spring rolls, which they're famous for here, which were so delicious. I'm mad that it took us so long to discover this place. It's actually very, very good. We also got this crispy pork belly truffle mac and cheese, which I like more than Kitra. It had like this really tiny pasta on it. I wouldn't say like seek out this place if you're coming to Oahu and not staying at Alani, but if you're staying at Alani, this is like one of the good restaurants that are in this area that you can like walk to and uh, not pay a fortune to the maps. <laughs> so I got one of the appetizers. I got Roy's baby back smoked ribs. This has chives and sesame seeds. And I've been craving this since we first <laughs> came here because we had it here and then at, off the hook at Alani they have some kind of ribs, which are fine. They're fine. They're good. I would even say they're good. 
but once you've had this, it's like having the best in the world and then going down to like, you know, good food. So anyways, I've been craving this, I'm gonna have it again. Let's see if it's as good as I remember it. it falls right off the bone. That barbecue sauce is sweet and tangy. They might be the best big bag ribs what? I've ever had. Seriously, they're okay, well, so good. I didn't even get to try them the last time we were here, so let's see if they get the Ordinary Adventure Star. Wait, you didn't get my rating yet. Five out of five. Okay. Who are we kidding? Okay. Mmm. The sauce is hard to describe. Yeah. But you just gotta trust us. It's almost like a teriyaki barbecue. Ah, uh, there we go. That's amazing. By the way, if you don't want this for your dinner, they do have a thing called like canoe for two, which comes with this, and then also has like the spring rolls and some other stuff too. Yeah. We were gonna get that, but then we figured that wasn't gonna be enough ribs. We had to get the, the full order. <laughs> of course, my hands are sticky. Thankfully, they have brought over some hot, wet towels. Feel bougie. <laughs> what I love about this place is they serve like upscale food, but you can wear Crocs or like your golf outfit. Like you don't have to dress up for fine dining. Legend says that if a ladybug lands on your shoulder, sweet talker to your finger, and with a gentle breath, send her off, lady luck will lead you to the cup. So basically, if you're a golfer and a ladybug lands on you, sweet talker, and she'll lead you to victory. Right? Is that what it means? Oh, oh I thought it was the Mai Tai. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Next up, we're going to a restaurant that's about five minutes away from Milani in Kapwei, and this is Broke the Mouth Grinds. And this is a family-run Filipino-Hawaiian food mashup, and if I've learned anything from Amanda and Felix, I've learned that Broke the Mouth means that it tastes incredible. One thing that they're known for here is their homemade mason jar lemonades. They have quite the variety, and the one that I'm gonna try today is a lychee strawberry lemonade. And I just love how big it is. It's huge. It is nice and sweet, a little bit of tartness to it as well. I absolutely love it, five out of five. And I decided to get the strawberry Lee hang. And first you gotta shake this up because there's like all this pulp on the bottom. See all that pulp going all over the place? It tastes like I'm drinking candy. So it tastes like a strawberry lemonade, but that Lee hang adds a sour tang to it. Five out of five here. Highly recommend this. This is huge, so I'm not sure if you can tell how big this is. 30, 40 ounces, I'm guessing. What I decided to get is the beef short rib off the chain fries. And this is shredded beef short rib on a bed of twisty fries with aioli sauce drizzle and green onion garnish. I actually tried these fries when I went to the big island of Hawaii during the summer, but I think I got like pork. And this time I'm trying the beef short rib and they were freaking amazing. And I've been dreaming about them ever since. The short rib is super flavorful, obviously melts in your mouth. I don't even really think you need all the extra toppings on top. Just give me the fries and the short rib and I'd be happy. This gets a five out of five. It's just as good as I remember. <laughs> Broke the Mouth Grinds is known as the home of the garlic furikake chicken. So I got the spicy garlic furikake chicken. This is deep fried boneless chicken wings dipped in sweet savory sauce with a spicy aioli, drizzled with sriracha, chili flakes, garlic flakes, furikake sprinkles, and green onion garnish with chili pepa wada dipping sauce and I upgraded my rice to the pork adobo fried rice and for my side I got the purple sweet potato salad with bacon and eggs. This looks amazing. I'm gonna steal one from Kitra here and say it's so flavorful. The heat just builds in your mouth because there's a, a nice combination of sweet and then spicy. I think it's spicy enough. I'm not sure if I would need the chili pepa wada. I love how they spell chili pepa water too. It's almost like from the, if you're from Massachusetts. Like my dad used to call me, Pita, Pita, chili pepa water. I feel like that's how he would say chili pepa water. This might be the best meal that we've had this trip to Hawaii. We've had some amazing meals. By the way, I think this was on Diners, Drive-In, and Dives. Did I say it right? I, don't know. I, I always I mix up know. the letters. Is if you're looking for some Filipino Hawaiian American twist, oh, I got your joint. It's right here. It broke them out grinds. But five out of five, Peters. 
I told you, it's flavorful. Yeah. I think I might like that more than the short rib. Yum. Well, the good news for you is this could feed like a family of four, so I think we can split it. Yeah, we only really got two different things because we wanted to show you guys like a variety, but honestly, you could just come here and split this with somebody. And we're still getting dessert. What are we doing? Yeah. But yeah, Ordinary Adventure Star, obviously, for everything, even the lemonade. So Peter tried some of these fries. He agrees. He made the Peter face. They're delicious. But somebody just came in here. This guy for Ferrari in here? No, but somebody just came in here to pick up a DoorDash order, so the people who live near here could order this on DoorDash. You know who else could order this on DoorDash? We could have ordered it from Alani. Why didn't we? It's like our final day. In the future, yeah. this is like perfect. Did you know that Ohana is where life begins and love never ends? And it also means, Ohana means family. How much would you give me if I took a sh this whole shot? I mean, you've already done it, so. I want to try it, but I'm too scared to try this whole thing. That's good. Oh my god, I took the babiest sip. How did I do it the first time? Because <laughs> I had no fear because I didn't know what I was doing. This is good, very flavorful. Yeah, you're not supposed to drink it though, you're supposed to put it on your food. Pouring the chili pepper water on top just made this like 10 times better. Pro tip. Just slather it on there. It's so good. There's a reason why the Hawaiians like it. Yes. <laughs> they also have a bunch of ice cream pies for dessert. So many that it was hard to pick which one I wanted to try, but the most popular one is the ube. And this is ube ice cream pie with a graham cracker crust and condensed milk drizzle. And it even says like on the menu that it's large and it's supposed to feed between three and four people. Look at this thing. It looks insane. Look at how much graham cracker is down there. This is our second ube pie of this video. I know. They love their ube here in Hawaii. And I love it as well. This is insanely good. I want to try every single... I want to start at everything on the menu, basically. But all of the pies looked so good. There was like a pumpkin one. There was a unicorn one that was like strawberry with like fruity pebbles. This is insane. The addition of the condensed milk really adds to the flavor. This obviously gets a five. I don't know what I like more. Do I like that cheesecake that we had or do I like this? Don't make me choose. I think it might be this one. Go into the, oh, that's probably a pro tip anyway. It's just like, <laughs> if it fall into that dust. This is second place that we ate in this video. Our third trip to Hawaii that should have been in our best of. <laughs> We just have to keep on expanding the best of Oahu video, right? That's what I was going to say. When we made the best of video, I was like, how could it be the best of if we haven't tried everything yet? It's the best of at that moment, and yeah. it was of that moment. Just now there's better. <laughs> So we had some extra time, so we drove up like this windy road to Tantalus Lookout, which overlooks Honolulu and Waikiki Beach. And the sun is setting, and this is just like a beautiful view. So if you, you're looking for a beautiful view of the city. This is absolutely stunning. You could look out and see all the skyscrapers. You could see like the entirety of Diamond Head Crater, which is pretty amazing, honestly. Like you could see the whole thing, and it is just, vibes up here like we're in the jungle we're the only ones here and it is like so magical i almost don't want to like share a secret with anyone but you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> but just just know there's like no parking up here so if you do come here and there might not be parking we got lucky on a friday night is this what it feels like to go on a hike <laughs> we went on a hike but we didn't <laughs> we didn't climb anything we yeah. took the car it's so pretty. Oh my god. I want this house right here. <laughs> Imagine living right here. Yeah, how much do you think that house probably costs? Six million dollars. Yeah, probably. Wow. Every Friday night, the Hilton Hawaiian Village in Waikiki has a fireworks show, and it's free to view because, well, you can't control the view of the sky. <laughs> but you do have to pay for parking. Yeah, so we parked here at the Hilton. And I think it's like $10 for the first hour and then $5 every half an hour or something. So it could add up, but if you time it right, you're only paying like 10, 15 bucks, which 
There might be better options out there, but we didn't check, so who knows. Yeah. <laughs> but not bad for a fireworks show. If only Awani had fireworks. I think they do on like New Year's or July 4th or something like that. But they have it here every week, so pro tip, maybe make your trip out to Waikiki on a on Friday. A Friday. Yeah. Yeah. around five minutes long and it was so bizarre watching fireworks without music because we're so used to like watching the yeah. Disneyland fireworks but what I was not expecting is that we were gonna be so close like I thought they were gonna be further off in the distance for some reason we were like right there yeah you're right there it's in your face it has like a fourth of July kind of feeling like right now the crowds are like like piling out <laughs> yeah. of this place yeah it's so funny it's funny but everybody was super excited they were like ooing and aahing and clapping and cheering. It was just fun. If you're around this area and you could see these, it happens every Friday and I would highly recommend. If you want to see what Monkey Pod has to offer for dinner, we'll put the videos right over there. I want to say thank you to some of our Patreons. That includes MW, Jay, and Eric. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure. Mahalo.